Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video, we'll be checking out some battles in the Halloween Cup featuring Hisuian Quillfish. Hisuian Quillfish is a dark and poison type Pokemon with the moveset of Poison Sting, Aqua Tail, and Shadow Ball, and Hisuian Quillfish, along with the other Hisui Pokemon available in Pokemon Go, are currently glitched in Go Battle League. If you use them, you'll notice their animations are completely broken, which leads to some pretty spooky visuals. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches and check out Hisuian Quillfish in action in the Halloween Cup. Hopping into the first match, picking up a terrible lead, Mandibuzz into Azumarill. I save switch into Hisuian Quillfish, and look at this! The Quillfish is absolutely glitched out. For whatever reason, its animations in battle are completely broken, so it just sits there. It is still throwing poisonous things and firing off Aqua Tails, but the Quillfish is just creepily sitting there and not moving whatsoever. I am able to get shield advantage from the Golurk, and now I can safely farm down with Mandibuzz. This Golurk, interestingly, enough is running earth power as their nuke move instead of dynamic punch mandibuzz able to get a massive farm down my switch clock is not quite up yet so when they bring in the azu i'm gonna fire off the area lace to burn my switch clock and then it is nido queen time and in the back my opponent has a shadow drapeon the nice thing is i'm running the regular nido queen so i will comfortably be able to tank any one move from the shadow drapeon I do have a Shadow Nita Queen built, but for this specific squad, since Hisuian Quillfish is incredibly glassy, I did want to opt for the non-Shadow Queen, just so I have better survivability. They're gonna fire off another Crunch, I will commit the shield, I should be able to overfarm ever so slightly here, and go for the Earth Power. Earth Power is gonna KO, and with a shield and a yellow health Nita Queen, I should be able to win this game. Opponent sees the writing on the wall, and concedes the match. Hopping into the next match, getting Mandibuzz into Dragalge. Considering my backline, I'm very happy to catch the Dragalge on the lead, so I am going to be staying in this match and playing it out. I'm going to fire off the foul play. This will do some nice chip damage, and Dragalge is going to let that through. They continue to farm up. I should be able to live in Outrage here if they decide to full send it, and they do. They go for the Outrage. That does quite a lot of damage, but I'm able to survive it. I don't want to get farmed down here, so if they shield, I'm going to switch into Nido Queen, but they ended up firing off a charge move, so I actually accidentally catch an Aqua Tail. They bring in Skuntank, so they don't have a great response to my Nido Queen. Skuntank is gonna fire off the Crunch. Crunch is gonna do some solid damage, but Nido Queen is able to tank it. Unfortunately, I do get my defense drop there. I fire off the Earth Power. Earth Power is easily going to KO the Skuntank. If they bring back in the Dragalge, my lower defense is going to hurt as these Dragon Tails are doing even more damage. I'm able to reach a last second Poison Fang here. Poison Fang gets the shield. My opponent is able to get rid of the Nido Queen. I'm gonna bring in Mandibuzz to force them to throw energy and then trust in his Suian Quillfish to close this match. In comes Quillfish and they have crossed in the back and Quillfish is looking strong to close out this match. I am going to be able to reach two Aqua Tails. First one gets them low. Second one is going to secure the KO and the Dracalgy is low enough that I should just be able to poison Sting down and secure the win. Hopping into the next match, leading Mandibuzz into Scizor. This is a very nice lead for Mandibuzz. The thing I have to watch for is that Scizor users really love to catch, because Scizor is very glassy. They go for the foul play catch onto their Umbreon. I'm able to hold onto my energy and fire off the Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace lands, and then I'm going to bring in my Nido Queen. Since they switched the Umbreon into a loaded Mandibuzz, odds are they're running Last Resort, which means that my Umbreon is safe from any potential Psychics. So I tank the foul play, and I'm going to fire off the Poison Fang. Poison Fang, of course, doesn't do a lot of damage, but does give that ever-important defense drop. I'm going to let this foul play through, and then throw six Poison Jabs, so that way I can fire off the Earth Power on the CMP tie to their next foul play. This way, if they want to get their energy off, off, they will have to commit a shield. They let it go, they bring in Scizor, and they decide to fire off a move. That works out very nicely for me, as I was not going to be able to reach a second Earth Power. Back in comes Mandibuzz. The Scizor did fire off a move, but if you remember, they banked quite a bit of energy before they switched out. They're able to reach for the Iron Head, that does quite a bit of damage, and I'm going to fire back with the Foul Play. This Foul Play is going to be taking out the Scizor. Scizor will commit the shield. These Bullet Punches are getting the Mandibuzz quite low. I'm expecting they're going to go for the Night Slash and the Farm Down. So I'm going to let this through and then trust in Quillfish. 
They're farming up quite a bit of energy here. Honestly, even a Night Slash will hurt Quillfish. That is how glassy this thing is. So I'm going to fire off the Aqua Tail before they're able to reach their next move. This Aqua Tail is going to be taking them out. In the back, they have a Zoomerill, and things are honestly looking kind of good for Quillfish here. I may have to make a catch, though. I go for the Shadow Ball. That does some nice chip damage. These Poison things are adding up quite a bit as well. This is an Ice Beam Azumarill, so I know in five more bubbles, I'm going to have to make a catch. So I'm going to fire off the Shadow Ball here, and then I'm going to need to throw three Poison things and then catch one two three switch and the catch on to mandabuzz and with that we should have this game won as long as my opponent isn't able to reach a move which is not going to be able to happen i'm able to reach the shadow ball shadow ball will be taken care of the azumarill and that is a good game Hopping into the next match, so the Mandibuzz into another Azumarill. Terrible lead, so I will immediately save switch into the Quillfish. Azu is farming up quite a bit of energy. They're staying in, so I'm just going to go for the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball is going to do some solid neutral damage onto the Azumarill. Azu tanks it, and then they're going to bring in their Shadow Scizor. I go for the Aqua Tail, but I lose CMP. I should live the Night Slash here, but they're running X Scissor, and X Scissor nearly takes me out. That is quite unfortunate. I fire off the Aqua Tail. They're able to tank it, and because they're running X Scissor, I don't get my second move. That is honestly pretty bad for me. I'm going to bring in Mandibuzz and just commit to the farm down. They are going to be able to reach double X Scissor here. They fire off the first, and there is the second. I'm just going to use this time to get energy on my Mandibuzz, and then hope that Nidoqueen can sweep in the back. In comes Azumarill, and they're just going to fire off a move. Ice Beam takes me out. I bring in Nidoqueen. It's a Wormadam in the back, and I concede the match. Hopping into the next match, leading Mandibuzz into a Scavalier. Much like the Scizor lead, I'm very happy to catch the Bug Steel on the lead so I can keep it away from my back line. They're staying in here and they're going to be going straight for the Megahorn. Megahorn does a lot of neutral damage. Mandibuzz able to hang on and go for the Foul Play. Foul Play will not KO, but it will get the Escav very low. And I'm going to try and go for the Farm Down. Escav reaches a last second move and I'm just going to let this through. Escav goes for a Drill Run. Mandibuzz hangs on with 1 HP and I'm able to fire off a blind last second foul play as they bring in their Mandibuzz. Definitely should have gone for the Aerial Ace, but either way, I was worried about getting sniped, so I just wanted to get some damage off no matter what they brought in. Since they have Mandibuzz, I'm going to bring in my Nidoqueen here. Nidoqueen, as I mentioned earlier, just has the bulk that Hisuian Quillfish does not. Hisuian Quillfish is extremely glassy, which hopefully for glassy mons, you would want them to hit really hard. But honestly, using Quillfish, I ended up discovering that it didn't really hit as hard as I wanted it to. And honestly, it ends up feeling a little bit like just a strictly worse Drapion. In the back, they have Toxapex. I'm going straight for the Earth Power, hoping they decide to call a Fang. Earth Power does get shielded. A nice shield there by my opponent. I'm going to stay in here. They're going to fire off their Brine right away. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to let this go, and let's see if Hisuian Quillfish can take down a Toxapex. Hisuian Quillfish looking absolutely ridiculous, standing completely stationary as it's going to fire off a move. Shadow Ball is able to land. I will be able to tank a Brine, but if they're able to reach a third Brine, that's where things get tricky. First Brine is able to land. Second Brine, I will, of course, shield, but a third Brine would KO. Shadow Ball able to land, and now I just have to reach the double Aqua Tails. I fire off the first. This is going to be grabbing their final shield, and it's going to be a race here. Quillfish farming up. They're at the back-to-back. -back. The question is, do I have enough energy for the Aqua Tail? Quillfish does have enough energy. I win CMP over the Toxapex. Aqua Tail, barely enough to take out the Toxapex and secure the win. Hopping into the next match, leading Mandibuzz into Trash Wormadam, an incredibly good lead, and my opponent is staying in here, which is even better. I'm going straight for the foul play. This will do some solid chip damage onto the Wormadam. Wormadam is very tanky though, able to withstand the damage, and they're going to be firing off a charge move. Bug Buzz hits for some heavy neutral damage, and they get the defense drop as well. That is really unfortunate. I'm going to fire back with a foul play. This foul play, I'm hoping, is going to be enough to KO. Wormadam Madame, able to hang on, but I'm able to take them out. We'll have to see what they have in the back. They did stay in a negative matchup. They're going to bring in Umbreon here. 
I'm expecting that they may have something like a Sableye in the back if they stayed in that negative of a lead. So I am gonna pivot out of here. And in this matchup, I was actually running the Shadow Nido Queen. But as you're gonna see, the Shadow does take a lot more damage from a foul play. And a second foul play, while not quite lethal, comes very close to taking me out. That's gonna get me deep into the red health. I'm gonna be firing back with the Earth Power. This Earth Power is going to hurt. Earth Power lands. He has his own Nido Queen in the back and things are suddenly looking extremely dire. I'm gonna bring in Quillfish. Quillfish, absolutely stationary, standing strong, because it does not have the ability to move. Aqua Tail gets the shield. Nido Queen easily has enough for the Earth Power. I shield last second, and I get baited with a Poison Fang. I try and go for a catch onto Mandibuzz, but my opponent holds on to their energy, and this is really bad. Poison Fang, able to land. Nido Queen, going for the farm down. I'm able to reach a last second. Second foul play, foul play, able to land. It gets the Nido Queen very low. At this point, I kind of need to poison this thing down to have a chance in this game. So I'm gonna bring in my Quillfish. Tough decision to make here. I let it through, just a Poison Fang. That is very clutch. I fire off the Aqua Tail on the CMP tie to the next Poison Fang. Aqua Tail is able to get the shield. I am still in such a tough spot here. I kind of need to save a shield for the Umbreon. The second Poison Fang gets me so low. I get poison jab down and we lose the game. Hopping into the next match, leading Mandibuzz into another Escavalier. Same game plan as before. I'm going to stay in here and try and get rid of the Escav. I go for the foul play, and my opponent is able to catch the foul play aimed at the Escav onto their Araquanid. However, these air slashes still do hit for super effective damage. So I'm going to bank a foul play for later and then bring in Nidoqueen. Nidoqueen does resist Bug Buzz, which means they are going to be forced to fire off Bubble Beams in this matchup. If they go for the Bubble Beam, that will, of course, lower my attack, but I'm just going to fire off. Off a poison fang straight away. My goal is after I land this poison fang to hopefully farm down and then leave with an earth power to threaten the escav. Bubble beam is able to land. I continue to farm. They are going to be able to reach another bubble beam and at this point I just get really stubborn. I'm like surely I can farm down here. I go for the farm down. Nido Queen not able to farm down and I concede the match. Hopping into the final match, leading Mandibuzz into Umbreon. Pretty neutral lead. Opponent is going to save switch out of that matchup into Dracalgy. The fact that they switched out of that matchup clues me into the fact that they could be running Psychic on their Umbreon, and if so, I want to try and keep it away from my Nido Queen, if at all possible. This Dragalgy has a ton of energy, I'm just gonna let it through on the Mandibuzz, and they only go for an Aqua Tail. That works for me, I'm gonna be firing off another Foul Play. This is gonna do some considerable damage, getting that Dragalgy quite low. Dragalgy is gonna be firing off a move, at this point I'm perfectly fine taking Shield Advantage. They go for the Aqua Tail there. They go for the farm down, but it's a simultaneous KO, and I'm able to win shield advantage. This is neutral. I'm just gonna bring in my Nido Queen, and they bring in their Umbreon. I'm expecting the Psychic, so I farm up, switch, and then catch what should hopefully be a Psychic onto my Quillfish, and it is. Let's go. In the back, they have Toxapex, the notoriously tanky beast. I'm going straight for the Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball is gonna be doing some solid chip damage, onto the Toxapex. Toxapex is gonna return fire with the Brine. Brine not gonna be enough to KO, but unfortunately, that is gonna put me into farm down range. I'm only able to reach a last second Aqua Tail. Aqua Tail resisted, not gonna be doing a lot of damage, and they're able to farm me down. I'm gonna bring in the Nido Queen, over farm, and then fire off the Earth Power on the CMP tie to the Brine. Earth Power takes out the Toxapex. Back in comes the Umbreon. And with a shield advantage, even though they have Psychic, I should be in a pretty good spot here. I'm going for the Poison Fang right off the bat. They're going to be letting that move through, and they've farmed up a ton of energy. They're probably going to double bait me, but at this point, even if I shield two foul plays, I should be okay. I build up to the Earth Power, hoping to try and grab a shield. Poison Fang bait does get the shield, and that is game over, as I am going to be able to reach the Earth Power, and now that they are double debuffed, this Earth Power will comfortably KO. I shield up their final move. I reach the Earth Power. This Earth Power will be taken care of the Umbreon. And that is a good game. And now some final thoughts on Hisuian Quillfish. 
First off, Niantic, please take the time to fix its animations when it's in battle. The fact that Quillfish just stands there not moving a muscle while it battles is honestly a bit creepy. In terms of the Pokemon's viability itself in the Halloween Cup, honestly, I left feeling fairly disappointed. At the end of the day, it basically just feels like a strictly worse Drapion, and in that case, in this cup, you may as well just run Drapion because it is going to outperform Hisuian Quillfish by quite a bit. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is absolutely incredible. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.